So you just got home with your brand new copy of The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. First off, congrats. Second, if you haven't already realized, you will soon enough. This isn't your Link's Zelda. This is Zelda Zelda and the rules have changed. The rules of navigation, of puzzle solving, definitely of combat, they're all different here. That's why I've spent my entire time playing this game, cataloging and writing down the very best tips and tricks for you to start your Echoes of Wisdom playthrough in the most amazing way possible. The best Echoes to grab, the tools to use, and ways to navigate this brave new world. I've got it all here for you so that you can enjoy this game to the maximum. I sure have been because to me, it's the beautiful hybrid of Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, and 2D Zelda all mixed together. So hit that like button if you guys are excited for Echoes of Wisdom. And now let me present you the very best tips for your early Echoes of Wisdom playthrough. Our first big tip is to grab every echo. Even if you don't think you'd use it, even if you think the enemy seems lame, even if you don't understand how it would add to your already existing arsenal, get every new thing you possibly can because some of them have very bizarre uses. For example, a mole that digs through the dirt might seem like a poor combatant, but it's actually great for when you're navigating the 2D segments and need to go down or up through sand. Also, there's an early echo that is overpowered and is very easy to miss. Early on in your journey, you'll be in the southern village, southern forest region, and you want to go to this cave right here. Make sure you make a little hop and skip over to this spot on the map, because inside you'll find a pea hat, which is not only a powerful echo, but a very large echo. Navigating and maintaining distance is one of the most important combat tips I can give you for Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. And the pea hat is so big and so strong, it's not only good for singular enemies, it's not only good for area of effect and multiple enemies, but it's great for keeping a strong, sturdy, large barrier between you and those that are trying to take you down. Grab the pea hat, don't be afraid to use it, and then grab every echo you can and build out your notebook. Echoes are accessed via a cross media bar style menu that can get very long very quickly. So make sure to take advantage of two main mechanics to easily access and better sort your echoes. The first one is just pressing the plus button to see the full grid. A notebook sounds like something where they just have like, I don't know, some lore and a little bit of verbiage on each echo, but actually the notebook is a place where you can see a full grid to choose your echoes en masse. This is probably the easiest, quickest way to sort through and find exactly the echo you're looking for, but I've also found it very helpful to use the different sort options and filters that the game gives you. You can sort by most used, you can sort by type, you can sort by recently learned, which is my favorite way to sort, and this is going to allow you to quickly get to the echoes that you just recently used or the ones that you just picked up. Especially early on, a lot of the areas are introducing you to echoes that are then going to be very important for your progress, so this is a great way to select what you just captured and use it again for yourself. Now, on a totally different note from the echoes, in this game, you can climb over stuff. You can climb around and above and over in ways that traditional 2D Zelda does not allow you to normally do. Link is kind of locked to the paths that are given to us by the game designers, but Zelda is able to circumvent those paths at pretty much every turn. Obviously, you've seen lots of videos on building beds and tables to climb over castle walls, but also don't be afraid to use your crawling echo whenever you can. This little Crawltula Echo is insane, as it allows you to just follow it straight up pretty much any surface you may see. This is going to be your vertical access key to get where you want to go, and after you learn follow a few short hours into the game, this is going to be a go-to traversal tool. But when push comes to shove, you just need to build your way over something, don't be shy and just make it happen. Also, don't be shy about using the bed. It might feel like a weak move or sort of a like soft cheat to pull out the bed, rest and regain your hearts. But as Zelda, you can lose hearts really fast. You don't have a shield to protect from incoming damage, so your life bar depletes very quickly, much more quickly than I'm used to. And you can die 
much more often than I expected early on in this adventure. That's why there's no shame in pulling out the bed, especially after you acquire the soft bed in the Gerudo region, which allows you to recover hearts even quicker. Don't be shy to sleep any chance you get. Just make sure that there's no enemies around because they can come and attack you. Now, speaking of enemies attacking you, this 2D Zelda introduces the Z targeting into the 2D framework. If you press the ZL button, you'll be able to not only target an enemy, but keep them in view and keep them at range. ZL is the best way to direct your echoes, and early on with some of the starter echoes, you may find like, you know what? These guys have these timed attacks that aren't really lining up and are hard to kind of get to actually damage the enemies. Make sure that you are targeting to keep them focused on where you want them to go and then also use that target to keep yourself in position because as i mentioned earlier distance is key here you do not want to get trapped you do not want to get cornered and you do not want to get close to majority of the enemies that will attack you if they have a chance but from quite a distance they just can't another reason why that p hat echo is really great because it does keep that space for you while providing a spinning bladed plant that does the damage as you move around out of harm's way. Of course, doing harm and staying out of harm is mission critical to a Zelda game, but there's also plenty of puzzles, and this Echoes of Wisdom title is chock full of really good puzzles, and I think they start out really clever even early on. So make sure to practice both follow and bind as soon as you acquire them. Bind is what allows you to, say, move a giant boulder out of the way and drop it into a pit. Whereas follow is what I mentioned earlier, where you can link yourself to a Crawltula and follow it straight up a wall. But there's many different usages for these two tactics and they're very important for puzzle solving. So make sure to practice and test them out wherever you are. You can also bind enemies, which allows you to kind of make them inert and move them where you need, drop them into a pit, or just tell them to take a pause. Hold their breath for a split second so you can get grips on what's going on. And then follow also has some nifty uses that you'll figure out as you go. Utilize both of these when you can, and don't forget that they're valuable in the overworld, in dungeons, in specific puzzle looking situations, combat situations, and more. Right back to those combat situations, do not be afraid to use the sword fighter mode once you get it. Something I'm really guilty of in games is when they give me a limited bar, I'm like, oh gosh, I gotta save that special meter for when I need it most. But Echoes of Wisdom encourages you to use sword fighter mode quite often and will help you refill your gauge pretty easily. I'm not saying you should spam it at every single encounter, but don't be afraid to use it, especially because through acquiring Might Crystals, you'll be able to upgrade not only the power of your sword, but also that meter, its length and how long you're able to stay in sword fighter mode. It doesn't run out as quickly as you might think, yet at the same time, you can't keep it going for very long. I think the game has it balanced super well, but just don't be afraid to use it. I found it more fun when I was able to actually do some of the attacking myself from time to time, and it's especially good for mini bosses and boss situations when the echoes might pop quicker than you'd imagine, because they don't have a ton of health, especially when it comes to big sweeping attacks that some of these bosses will definitely throw your way. We've talked so much about combat, I feel like I need to give you guys a few go-to recipes for success. So, here's a few echoes that I really like that can really help you out when you're in a pinch. In order of when you acquire them, Ignazol is your fire tactic du jour. This can not only be used for lighting torches, but also just like lighting anything and anyone on fire. I use this a lot if I can't figure out a way to deal good damage to an enemy or if their attack pattern is quicker than what my echoes are able to muster. Just go drop an Ignazol very close by them and they'll be on fire taking damage over time and eventually they will bite the dust. Use this guy in a pinch. He does not hurt you, but he can take down boxes, grass, and enemies alike. Mr. Tornando is annoying when he's blowing you off the cliffside, but he's very, very friendly when he's at your disposal. Anytime there's an enemy or something in my way that I didn't like, didn't want to deal with, or didn't want to wait for the combat encounter to complete, I just throw out Tornando. Throw him, he goes in a nice direct line, which out of all the echoes thus far seems to be the one that you have a great amount of control over because he will blaze in the direction you throw him, which allows for a very targeted way of going after specific enemies. 
It also just throws them into the air and allows you to move briskly by if you don't want to deal with a complete combat encounter. And there's certain enemies that eventually will spook you that I think this is the best course of action for. So get familiar with Tornado. And last but not least, I really like this one. It is going to be the Path Blade, which seems like something you wouldn't even be able to echo, but that's the brilliance of Echoes of Wisdom. You can echo just about everything. And the Path Blade is great because it goes in a path. It's spinning back and forth back and forth which can be used to corner and contain enemies and deal extreme damage as the blade goes back and forth especially if you utilize some of the environment along the way to really kind of capture them into a specific corner a specific little square and then just beat on them over and over again those are three of my early favorites along with the p hat but i'm sure you'll find your own favorites i just wanted to give you a few to start with in case you're finding combat a little bit crazy as Echoes are the new mechanic here, and as many of them are quite awesome to witness, it can be easy to throw one out and wait for it to disintegrate. But once you get more a hang of the system, and once you feel a little less bad about popping those Echoes, you'll realize that, hey, you don't have a ton of Echo energy early on. Now, this is something that you'll gain over time, and it will allow you to spawn more and more expensive Echoes in concert with each other. But especially early on, don't be afraid to respawn Echoes very frequently. If one of your little batty bats is not getting where you need him to go, throw it out again. If the path blade is in the incorrect position, don't worry, just throw out another one. It will always erase the echoes in order. So path blade one, path blade two, oops, now path blade three replaces path blade one. Sometimes it's fine and fun to just massively spawn these echoes because they do cost a lot. It's gonna be hard to have more than one out at the same time and they're instantaneous. So if you need it to do something now, you're better off just respawning sometimes than targeting. If you've got enough energy to spawn two things like two moblins with spears, yes, targeting is very good and you can kind of attack things from multiple angles, but even in that instance, don't be shy about respawn. The echoes don't feel it, I promise. Back on the puzzle solving front, there are a lot of really nifty spaces here for you to be creative. The game encourages you to solve the puzzles the way that you want to solve them, and almost always there are multiple solutions to get the job done. Now, in some instances, yes, the game is trying to teach you to use a certain specific echo, but I found myself getting very locked into this idea that I had to solve it using a singular method, and then you come to realize, like, oh, I can kind of just build stuff whenever I need to. If you're in a pinch and can't figure out how to use a recent echo to get the job done, don't forget that you can not only build trampolines, boxes and tables to climb, but you can also build trees and statues that you can jump on. This ability to create platforms up in the air for you to not only navigate across gaps, but also to reach heights is very valuable. And most of these echoes can stack on each other very nicely. The sky is sort of the limit when it comes to creating your echoes and solving your puzzles. And I mean that quite literally because the verticality component is something that it still takes me time to realize like, I gotta do a lot of this. Crawling up walls with crawl Tula, placing trees to allow me to jump and cross uncrossable chasms, and then stacking beds, of course, to make makeshift bridges is very Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom-esque. And it works just as wonderfully here in Echoes of Wisdom. I freaking love that they found a way to combine the 2D side of Zelda with its intense puzzle solving and sprawling dungeons with the awesome creativity and player directed gameplay of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I've been blown away and floored by this game thus far and I can't wait to explore more and bring you even more cool tricks and tips for you. But let me know if you found any awesome tips and tricks and which one of these has helped you out in your early journey of the game. Hopefully a few of them make your early hours more awesome and trust me, the game just gets better and better as it goes on. So thank you so much for watching everybody enjoy your echoes of wisdom journey out there zelda is a freaking amazing main character and i think they gave her an awesome move set to make this game distinct but still of such high quality so thanks so much for watching stay safe stay healthy stay happy stay positive out there and until next time switch force out